I love a rainy day. What better way to see that water is moving all around us? Hi, I'm Catherine, Program Coordinator for DCR's Division of Water Supply Protection. I'm here at Wachusett Reservoir. It's a passing rain shower. I'm staying mostly dry under a canopy of evergreens. Today, I'd like to show you a raised relief model of a watershed. And I'd like to show you how to create a model of your own. So grab your virtual raincoat and come along. Water is all around us and it never stays still. It moves to different places, but it's never used up. The water cycle is nature's recycling system of moving water molecules from on, above, and below the surface of the earth, driven by the energy from the sun and the force of gravity. As the sun's energy warms water, it changes to water vapor and evaporates into the atmosphere to crystallize and form clouds that are then carried by weather patterns that can transport water around the globe. As the vapor cools, it condenses and falls back to earth as precipitation. So let's follow the rain on its journey through a watershed. To demonstrate this, I'm going to take you inside the headquarters building in West Boylston to see a model of a watershed. A watershed is an area of land that drains or sheds water into a common location. Think of it like a funnel. Rather than a flat map, this raised relief map or 3D model shows hills and valleys and shows when rain falls or snow melts, gravity causes it to flow downhill to seep into soil by absorption, be taken up by plant roots, or run off the surface of the land as it picks up possible pollution, then collects in surface waters. As it rains on roads and parking lots, road salt, oil, or gas can enter the water directly or by a storm drain. Washing a car can potentially pollute the water with oil, grease, phosphate, soaps, cleaners, and road salt. It's better to wash a car on a lawn where the water can filter through the plant roots or take it to a car wash. Pet waste left on the ground can bring dangerous bacteria, viruses, and parasites into the water. It's important to clean up after your pet. Geese, ducks, gulls, muskrat, and beaver all deposit bacteria directly into surface waters. This is dangerous if water is used as a drinking water supply. Too many deer in a forested area can harm the plants and trees growing and limit the forest's ability to soak up water. As rain falls on a farm, equipment leaks, pesticides, fertilizers, parasites from animal waste, and loose soils can all wash into nearby water. A buffer of a living fence or trees can help. It will also provide shade to keep the water cool. Clear-cutting trees or unmanaged forestry can cause erosion as rain washes the soil and rocks into our waterways. Landfills might contribute trash and leaking chemicals infiltrating into groundwater. Fishing and boating can cause the spread of aquatic invasive species, living things that don't belong in an area. Fishing line and trash can be dangerous to animals that live in the water. It's important to not litter and to clean equipment after use. In areas with impervious or hard surfaces, the sun's energy evaporates water quickly. Rain runs off these hard surfaces, carrying anything left on the ground. Potential pollutants from homes are leaves and grass clippings, household chemicals, fertilizers, pesticides, even leaky septic systems or faulty sewer lines. Forests slow down the rain. Trees act as natural sponges, collecting and filtering rainfall and releasing it slowly into streams and rivers. Even on a sunny day, water is moving all around us. Plants and trees take in water through their roots, then release it through their leaves to transpire water vapor back into the atmosphere. And the cycle continues. Now it's time to create your own model to see how water moves through a watershed and discover ways to keep pollution out of our watershed basins. The rain has stopped, just a light sprinkle, 
I'm going to stay outside and show you how to make a model watershed. If you're inside, use something like a tray or a dish pan. I'm outside, but I'm going to use this as a tray. It's lid to a storage bin. Gather some materials from your recycle bin. Maybe some newspaper, I have a drink tray, and arrange some hills and valleys, some high and low areas of a landscape to look like a watershed. Once you have your landscape arranged, cover it with a trash bag. Tuck in the edges, especially if you're inside. So when we spray water on it, it doesn't get everywhere. Push it down into the areas where there will be rivers to really form your landscape. Now you can spend as much time on this as you like. If you have permanent markers, you can add waterways or draw on roads. If you have figures, you can add them. I'm going to put a fish in the pond in the bottom. I have a little turtle I'm gonna put in the wetland. If you have game pieces, you can add those as well. I have some houses. Once you get your watershed set up, you're going to make it rain and see where the water sheds down and collects at the lowest point. Now it started raining again. I don't really need the spray bottle, but what you're going to do is spray water all over your landscape and see where the water sheds down and collects at the lowest point. And then we're going to add a challenge. We're going to add some pollution and think of ways we can stop that pollution from getting into our waterways. But what I'd like you to do is come around behind me so you can see what we're doing. After making a landscape and covering with a trash bag, you can use permanent markers to draw on features. You can add figures or cut out pictures from a magazine or just leave it plain. The point is to see where precipitation falls or sheds downhill to a common location. Predict what will happen to the rain that falls on your landscape. Will it go to the same place? How will it flow? Do you have ridge lines that create more than one location that the water drains to? Make it rain with a spray bottle across the landscape. Notice where precipitation is falling and pooling up in the low areas or valleys. Next, we're going to add a challenge. Use some common items you might find to create areas of pollution on your watershed. Think about locations and sources of pollution that we saw on the model in part one. How will you locate a source of pollution on your landscape? What items do you have on hand that can create pollution? You can pause this video or read along in the guide for suggestions, or think of your own. All you need is a tiny bit. I'm using some spices and opening a tea bag and food coloring. I'm adding some pollution by these houses, things that were left on the ground, pet waste or litter, I'm dropping some food coloring where maybe some road salt and motor oil washed into a storm drain. What will happen to the water that's collected at the lowest points? Make it rain and find out. Stop using the spray bottle and switch to sponges. Soak up the water and cycle it through by squeezing it out again. Imagine the role of trees and plants in the water cycle. Make your watershed a little more realistic by placing a paper towel or sponge on the sides to represent soil and plants. Let it rain again and notice what happens. Imagine it this way. Think of the land alongside a stream as a sponge sloping uphill away from the stream. When it rains, some water is absorbed into the sponge called infiltration, and some runs off the surface of the sponge as runoff. Gravity still pulls the water downward, with most of it seeping out and into the stream. Water, 
naturally cleans itself by filtration through the ground and evaporation through the water cycle. Think about how the landscape can be changed to stop the pollution from getting in the rivers, lakes, reservoirs, or oceans. Once the water is polluted, how can it be cleaned? It's hard to clean water once it's polluted. The best way to protect water supplies is by keeping the water, the ground, and the air free of pollutants as much as possible for a clean water now and into the future. For more watershed model and water cycle activities, check out our activity guides or suggested follow-up activities in the resources section of the virtual field trip packet. Try to take a photo or sketch of your watershed before you clean it up. So then you can create a diagram as a follow-up activity. You can send photos of your model watershed and any questions you may want to ask to the email at the end or the bottom of the resource page. Thank you for joining me on this virtual field trip. Enjoy creating your own models as you learn how water moves through a watershed.